What is up, Sheepdog Nation? Welcome to another podcast of Sheepdog Nation with your host, me, Autumn Clifford. As always, I'm really excited to be here with you. Um, I want to thank you so much for hanging out. I would like to just ask that if this podcast, if this means anything to you or any of my episodes, would you just do me a favor and would you share this out? Just copy paste the link. Share this out on your social media. Try to spread the word. I want to reach as many police officers, obviously, as I possibly can. Um, just by, I just want to help them. I want to, you know, really try to bring law enforcement back together, kind of change the way that we've been going, and really work on the brother and the sisterhood and surviving the career, right? Really. That's really what I'm looking to do. So if you can share this out, that would be excellent. And the second thing is, is uh, if you could go and write this, Um, and write a review that would greatly help me out. Um, I appreciate it. Um, So let's dive in. So today's topic, I want to talk to you about uh, defensive tactics. So what you should know is that um, I am a a defensive tactics instructor and I've been one for years. used to, before I had to medically retire, I used to go to the uh, police academy and I would teach cops or people in the academy how to fight. And it was really awesome. And, you know, it was, was, for me, it was super empowering because like not a lot of women, you know, go through that training. The training, you know, you're fighting. You fight for like a whole week, which is fucking awesome. Because for me, what you have to understand is, you know, I've been in martial arts since I've been five years old. When I was 13 years old, they threw me into the adult black belt class. And they beat the fucking hell out of me from the time I was 13 until I was like 20. I mean, literally. So getting beat up, I'm very familiar with getting beat up, but I also became a better fighter because of it. And so, you know, law enforcement and having that command presence and, you know, not being afraid to go hands on, it really helped me. But I want to talk to you about it because, you know, um, you may or may not have seen we, you know, we've been having obviously you know a a lot of hands-on situations it's always going to be like that law enforcement it's getting scarier now because of the drugs I know the the crystal meth um, I know in my neck of the woods is kind of replacing heroin and as we all know heroin is a downer and we know crystal meth makes people fucking nuts and so anyways it's definitely getting a little more scary and so I just want to remind you I just want to ask you like when's the last time you went and took a defensive tactics course? Like when have you went and trained jujitsu? When's the last time you went, you know, to a Brazilian jujitsu class or, or anything? Like when is the last time you've done this? This is really important, you guys. And yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna go on and on and on, but I'm gonna go on for a few minutes because, you know, we had a, um, there's a girl I follow and um, on Instagram, and I'm sure that you guys kind of saw it too. She got into she got into a hands on. She went hands on, and I believe the guy was on drugs. Anyways, it wasn't like he he wasn't actively resisting her. He was actively in a fight with her. And luckily, she trains jujitsu. Thank God. And she even said it like, "Thank God I trained because if I didn't, it would have sucked." And what was like a three or five minute scuffle seemed like eternity. And that and that's the truth. And here's the deal: you can go and you can be in the best shape ever, you guys. And I know a lot of you are. Like I know a lot of you run and you lift and. And, you know, you do fucking whatever you do and you count your macros and all this shit. And it got, I'm wicked proud of you and, and I'm not shitting on you. But if you are doing all of that and you do not train, you are not boxing, kickboxing, jujitsu, Muay Thai, whatever. Like you're not doing something. Then all of that to me is pointless because you're just a fucking showboat. Like, yep, yeah, you look good. But let me tell you right now, somebody who trains jujitsu, it doesn't matter what, how good a shape you are. I could whoop your fucking ass. Just because somebody who trains just knows how to maneuver a body. Like, that's it. Like, the guys that I used to fucking fight against, like, let me just tell you, there wasn't women. I mean, there was a few women who whooped my ass and fucking, I'm not too proud to fucking admit that. Like, they, these are badass women, okay? Like, champ, like champion boxers, champion kickboxers. Like, that's who would whoop my ass. But when I was growing up, you know, and taking martial arts and I, you know, and I took jujitsu as well, but that's not who I'm talking about right now. Who I'm talking about is these guys I would train against six feet, six, five, you know, fucking two thirty, fucking jacked. I mean, there was a guy that I used to train with and he was a fucking beast, a beast. He like did like back when P90s, P90X came out, he did it and got fucking ripped and he was huge. Like 
he was literally 230 but shredded fucking shredded and huge like huge guy and I, and he would we would train we, we'd roll together and let me tell you I got my ass handed to me more times than not but here's what I learned is I learned I learned what his weaknesses were because I had to he wasn't as quick as me now when he got a hold of me life sucked but until then I could run circles around him and I did you know and I did pretty good and so I learned this though from training from fighting and I just think that we have on especially on Instagram we have this emphasis on I want to look good and oh look at how big my arms are and oh you know I, look at my quads and here's my six pack and and while I want to you know obviously commend every single one of you who are working really hard to get into shape don't get me wrong I you know I'm obviously if you follow me on Instagram you know that I'm working my ass off of getting back in shape too because when I got hurt I gained a ton of weight and fucking kind of got depressed and all that shit so like I've had to work you know pull myself out of that and work my way into pulling my head out of my ass but I'm not on the road anymore and so you know I mean I still train I'm teaching (laughs) and I still train you know what I mean and um eventually in the fall I'm going to be going back to jujitsu myself and taking classes but I just I'm bringing it up to you because I want to see you start training now if you're like autumn I don't have time you know you work all the time there's things that you can do you can do defensive tactics if you're an FTO get your fucking FTO like get the the student right and fucking train go and take classes if you can't take classes I like for me like I have this online fucking library full of just like just like defensive tactics shit just for you to go over and to practice like if you're interested in that then just get on Instagram or email me and fucking I'll send it to you but like because there's no reason that you can't have this information and like listen I know you did it in the academy I know you did, but if you're not doing it all the time and you're not fucking hitting a bag and you're not doing all this stuff, then you're not in shape. And here's what I need you to know. There is no way to get into fighting shape other than to fight. That's it. So, you know, when and you guys know when somebody's actively resisting you and you don't have backup, what is 30 seconds to a minute literally feels like fucking 20 minutes, doesn't it? Unless you're in fucking fighting shape. Like, I'm going to tell you, when I fucking, when I started FTO, I... I'll tell you, the God really like he helped me out because my FTO, he's a he was a jujitsu guy, trained guy, fucking awesome. And I had taken a couple years off, like two a year or two off from jujitsu. And just those two years off, mind you, listen, altogether I think I've been training since for like twenty years. And no. Yeah, yeah, because I'm twenty eight now. Holy cow, I'm old. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Don't knock me out. Anyways, so he, I, I had taken a year or two off and we were starting like we we're on FTO and he's like, okay, like you're going to go hands on. And I'm like, what? No. And he's like, yeah, you are. And don't worry, I'm here, but I'm not helping you. I'm like, fuck, dude. So we go hands on and I remember being like, I couldn't even breathe. I was so nervous. I was like, <gasps> what do I do? What do I do? Donnie. And like, and his name was Donnie. And I'm like, Donnie, what do I do? Donnie. And he was so calm. He was like, do this, do that. And I mean, this girl was like, she was psycho and like legitimately like not right. And I'm like, Donnie, like, and she was like, she was actively resisting, but listen, then she ended up biting an EMT guy, biting his hand. So like, when I tell you she wasn't right, I wasn't lying. And anyways, and so um, he was so calm and I, I'll never forget that because he was just like, all right, now we're going to get her an arm bar. She doesn't want to listen. Let's get her into an arm bar. And I'm like, dude, you are so calm about this. And then after he ended up and like, this was the first week of my FTO because he didn't, he didn't mess around. He was like, I need to figure out if you're, you know, you he'd tell me, he'd go, you're either, Clifford, you're either swatty or not. And I'm going to fucking figure it out. <laughs> and, and what he meant was you're either going to be a good cop or not. And I'm going to fucking know right now. And so, you know, I handled it, but that, that story is after, after that situation, he ended up taking me to his jujitsu classes. And, and part of my FTO, honestly, was multiple times a week. I'd go train. 
and it were it was so worth it it was so fucking worth it it the confidence it gave me when you know and and everyone loved me as backup because I didn't I wasn't afraid I was not afraid and not only was I not afraid I wasn't one of those assholes that would come and make the fucking scene worse I would come and I would you know clean up business I would pay attention you know and so I just I really want to get on your ass a little bit about it because you need to be doing it, you know, and I, I see so many fucking guys, they get in that three to five to 10 year slump and you're just like, I'm the fucking man, like, you know, like, or woman, like, I, I know what I'm doing. You got a good grasp. You got a good handle on your job and I get it. You know, you know, your routine, you know, your patrol, you know, you're probably pretty good at, you know, OUIs or arrests or, you know, drug interdiction or whatever the hell you do you're good at it. And so you're like, yeah, I don't really, you know, I don't, I don't really need this. And the truth is, is that you do. And that slump is going to be what kills you straight up said with so much love. Sheepdog said with so much love, do not get in that slump. Okay. Get your ass to a jujitsu class that made a rhyme and start training. And let this be your motivation. Let this episode piss you off enough that you're like, you know what? Fuck that bitch. Like, I'm going. Like, she just pissed me off. Like, she just called me out. You're right. I am. And I'm not doing it for any other reason other than I want to see you survive. I want to see you go home. You need to go home. Just like that girl did. I can't think of her name right now. But you guys, I'm sure if you're on Instagram and if you follow any of the big, the, the blue pages, you know, th- thick blue line. I know he shared it. I love that guy. Go, sh- go follow that guy. He's awesome. He's, he's, a, he's a cop's cop. Thick blue line. That page, definitely a cop's cop. Love that guy. Um, anyways, he shared it. And um, she fucking, and she was just straight up, man. Like her face was busted up and, and all this stuff. And, and here's the thing. Like she survived. Like she, and she handled her business until backup got there because she trained. You know, and and it's, this isn't just, this is not, this episode is not geared just towards women, FYI, towards women. I've been with tons of guys who fucking didn't know what the hell they were doing. And I'm, and I'm, I arrive and I'm like, oh my fucking word. Like, cause you can only manipulate somebody with your body so much. Then you, you know, then you really got to know technique. You know, you can be only so big and do only so much until you meet your match, until you meet somebody who's just like you, big, big as you. That you know that you need to know technique, and you do, and and it's not even that your endurance. Your endurance is so huge, and uh, I, again, you can go and run ten fucking miles, but if you're not training to fight, then you have no idea because it's an it's an additional adrenaline dump. Like as you run, you know you're kind of you're running to relax, right? You're like, you're like a lot of people running relaxes them. It does not relax me. <laughs> it makes me fucking die, but. Um, you know, or whatever, but it's, it's an even pace typically. Right. But when you're in a fight, even if you're training, your adrenaline is fucking everywhere. It is absolutely everywhere. Okay. Cause you don't know what that person's doing. You don't know if you're going to be in a choke. You don't know if you're getting like going to get tapped out. Like you don't know if you're going into an arm bar, you have no idea what that person's doing. And so your adrenaline is everywhere and you've got to learn how to breathe. You've got to learn how to breathe and slow your heart rate down. And you've got to learn how to think under pressure. And you're like, you know, and it's a whole different kind of pressure. So get your ass into a class. Uh, message me if you need anything. I, if this meant anything to you, let me know. This is a, obviously a subject I'm super passionate about. I teach women self-defense. It's not just self-defense. My women's class is more of an MMA class, but I don't call it MMA because it's not like a ground and pound. Um, I'm taking women who have never even been touched before and I'm bringing them through um, you know, and I'm teaching them how to be trained fighters, which is awesome, but it's, it's a lot slower than if you went to like a BJJ class, which I highly suggest you guys go to. Like, if you want to train, if this, if you want to train, I, I don't care what you decide, you go take anything. If you want to take boxing, go take boxing. Okay. You want to take jujitsu, take jujitsu. I highly suggest you end up switching your trade up. And I, and I want you to see like, I want you to see like different arts and I want you to train in different things. I want you to know that 90, 80 to 90% of all fights end up on the ground, especially if you're a cop, because where are we trying to get them fucking on the ground and with their hands behind their back? Right. So like understand those statistics and understand that fucking, you know, you're going to end up on the ground. But if you learn how to, I mean, there's nothing wrong with learning how to box because I'll tell you right now, there's nothing fucking more scary than when you're on the road and you see somebody 
you know, you've got to arrest somebody and you see them put their hands up and you don't know how to defend yourself, let me tell you, a boxer would knock you out fucking cold and fast if you don't know how to defend against that. You know, so I'm just saying, I don't care what, you know, martial art you decide that you're going to train in, go train in something. Okay? All right. If you guys need anything, reach out to me at the Lady Sheepdog on Instagram. Email me at autumn at autumnclifford.com. Um, again, I hope this was helpful and I will talk to you later. Bye.